Ladies and gentlemen, this is internet personality Vangelis, and the first wave of Nika's Pacific Rim offerings concludes with a kaiju to face down the pair of Jaegers that made up the rest of the shipping assortment. This is Knifehead, the Guronical beast seen early on in the film. Uh, small spoiler alert. Really winning out in the digitally sourced sculpt department, Knifehead's entire body is covered in a tactile tasty texture, and the pointy parts are hell of pointy! Knifehead's knife head can practically be used as a stabbing weapon in a pinch. Between its molded color and one-tone highlights, the kaiju's dermis has a very strong base look. The yellow markings are much cleaner than I expected, though they're still a bit thick and a bit sloppy here and there. I do really like the small details picked out on the eyes and mouth, and I'm fairly impressed at how much the bendy plastic tail blends in as it flows into the rest of the body which is made of a much stiffer plastic. All of this hits one unfortunate wall when you see the scale between Knifehead and the Jaegers he ships with. He is bulky, but also a head too small. Apparently, he is in scale with SH Monster Arts, which is cool, but that tidbit also just makes me wish the Jaegers had been designed about an inch shorter to be in better scale and maybe using the excess material to beef out their joints engineering. Oh well. Alright guys, let's look at the most impressive point of articulation on Knifehead. His mouth can open and close. Now his tongue is permanently sticking out there, so he's kind of just... He's doing horrible things to himself. I don't know if you ever chewed on your tongue for a prolonged amount of time, but if you do that and you don't feel bad about it afterwards, then I don't think we can be friends. Uh, when I say most impressive, that is because his other points of articulation are a straight cut swivel at the shoulder, straight up hinge at the elbow, but still a better range than Gypsy Dangers, uh, a kind of inexplicable ball jointed hip that is basically a V crotch because there's a there's a barbell double ball joint in there, but it's really just a straight V crotch. And there's a hinged knee, which is kind of a Gypsy Danger style knee because this doesn't really doesn't really accomplish very much at all. Uh, he also has 500 million points of articulation in his tail because it's a bendy wire. And, uh, you know, kudos. This bendy wire doesn't feel super chintzy. It feels for a, a wire that will eventually break if I keep doing this. Pretty okay. And it extends all the way up into the tip of the tail, so you can almost get a little bit of bend in this huge bulb here. So, you know, grats. Now, uh, am I mad about this like I am with, uh, with some of the limitations on Gypsy Dangerous Articulation? Not as much. Because I don't feel like this toy is misleading me. This looks uh, less like... A limited action figure and more like a kaiju vinyl what has bonus articulation because he doesn't have a lot of points of articulation they were able to get the sculpt to look pretty damn cool uh, I will say that wasting a parts count on a ball joint system for what is essentially a cut V crotch it's kind of uh, I think that's kind of silly and these two arms don't move at all and I think that sucks these should move somehow even if it was just like a little ball joint a little swivel or even like a wire like these being static kind of is a bummer um, so this guy he is not posable whatsoever and if you're looking for posability you might want to just walk away from knife head but uh, if you can pretend that he's something that's not supposed to be posable that happens to be then that sounds a whole lot like a super BS excuse I'm making up in, in immediate 10 second retrospect. Let's, uh, let's move along. Straight up, I don't really like this figure's misaligned scale and incredibly limited posability. His sculpt is strong, but he just doesn't do enough to engage me. However, that makes me feel like he'd be right up the alley of kaiju vinyl and soft bee collectors. He's chunky and heavy, feeling satisfying even though he can't do a whole lot else. Knifehead also puts the cap on top of my key thought for Wave 1 of NECA's Pacific Rim offerings. These are three very different figures. Gypsy Danger is a semi-classic nerd hummel, not overly posable and mostly serving the purpose of being a figure of a design. Crimson Typhoon is obscenely unique and modern, having a higher level of overall quality and engineering. And then there's Knifehead, who is a straight-up kaiju vinyl, done in plastics and given a handful of extra joints. Three very strange peas that just barely fit in the same pod, and I think one of the seams is still ripping a bit. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and despite my lack of being wowed by their first wave, I liked the film enough to go in on the next trio of NECA Pacific Rim figures, whenever they come out. That, and if Wave 2 does well, we might get to say previet to a posable plastic Cherno Alpha. 
though that might just end in heartbreak, as it probably won't have a spring-loaded fist. 